Hi, and welcome back to Neural Splendor. Uh, today, one of our drivers went out, and when she returned, she had a check engine light on. So we're going to talk about fault code 1896, which is an EGR valve in the wrong position fault. Uh, the engine was an ISX 871. That's very important because the EGR valve styles change between the 870, 871, and then the 2250 and 2350s and 2450s, the EGR valve is pretty much unchanged because it works really well. So let's take a look at uh, what happened and what we had to do to fix it. We hooked up Cummins Insight and we saw that we had two counts of fault 1896, which is EGR controller out of calibration. When you start this engine up in the morning, the ECM opens the EGR valve to about 90%, and then it waits for a few seconds, probably about 15 or 20 actually, and then it, shut, it shuts the valve, and then it goes back out to see if the valve actually shut. The way this valve works, it's a spool with a spring on one end, and a stepping motor on the other. And the stepping motor basically unwinds a screw that goes out and pushes the spool off its seat and opens the valve. When it comes back in, the spring pressure on the other end is what closes the valve. Then it goes back out and it measures torque because it knows torque increases when it hits the valve, there's more resistance. Now it's got to push against the spring. So if it has to go out too far to feel that valve resistance, it knows the valve is stuck open. As a side note, you can also see if the valve is partially open in the uh, data logger monitor. If you logger all parameters, there's a parameter in there called EGR valve offset. And that basically is how far that stepping motor has got to go out. That number always needs to be under 30. If you're at 30, you're real close to logging this fault code. A uh, new valve, I've seen them down around 22 or 3. Average is 25 to 27, and that's perfectly acceptable. So we've got this fault, and we have to figure out if we're going to replace the valve or if we're going to clean it. So it's important to, to know why this happened. It's winter time. This engine idles a lot. When this engine idles, because it's got the old mechanical injectors, you've got a lot better chance of having um, sticky fuel in the exhaust because you don't get a you don't get a very clean spray pattern because it's low pressure compared to a common rail. Um, even though a rocker arm is injecting it at idle, that thing's moving fairly slow, so you don't get a good spray pattern. That sticky fuel will make its way to the, to the spool of this valve. The EGR valve is actually a valve that goes into a uh, bushing instead of into a guide and a head. And when it's pushed open, if uh, that shaft that's in the bushing is open to the, the air, so fuel particles will stick on it. And then when it gets cold, that gets sticky and it if it gets sticky enough, it'll hold the valve open. So sometimes you can take the valve apart and clean it and put it back together and you'll be fine. Uh, this valve had a lot of miles on it, so we chose to change it instead. This is our fault snapshot that you see inside of the software we use, which is called Insight. And it is basically all the sensors values that the ECM gets frozen in time when that fault logs. And there's a first and a last. In our case, the first and last was, a, last was about a half hour apart. So it was cold, about four, uh, maybe 30 degrees, 35 degrees when she started the truck up this morning, let it idle a little bit, and then took off. And uh, we're on a side street, so she was just kind of uh, slowly bobtailing down the side street really no load, and then the uh, the valve, the ECM opened the valve for a moment, and then it decided to close it, and you can see the 78, it didn't close. 
Now, if you look right above the zero, you'll see that the EGR temperature was 84. So the engine was just warming up. If you look down a few lines, you'll see the engine coolant temperature was 90 degrees. So we still had a, a cold engine. The water's starting to warm the block up, but the EGR valve's still cold. And then when we get over on the right, you'll see that the EGR temperature went up to 140 and the water temperature is at 155 and the valve was opened and again it didn't close. So we took the valve off and found that the shaft was was all uh, glopped up with uh, fuel. It was sticky. It had carbon on it. And we could have taken it apart and cleaned it and solvent to get the, the fuel off of it. But the seat that the valve seats again was was pretty rough looking. And we don't want leakage out of this valve when we're running down the road because if the engine doesn't want EGR flowing, you don't want EGR flowing because that will cause mixture problems, which causes smoke, which causes the after treatment to be stressed. So uh, this is what we gathered from the snapshot. We put the new valve on, started the engine up, it did the self-check, it passed. Remember earlier I said that it opens and closes on startup. We cleared the inactive faults and let the unit go back to the customer. And it was a good repair. And we didn't over-repair it and we didn't under-repair it. The unit has about 770000 on it and the valve had been on there for quite a while. So it was time for it to uh, move on down the road. Thanks for joining me at Neural Splendor. Subscribe if you haven't. Lots good, of good stuff coming up. And make sure you leave comments on uh, the videos and on things you'd like to see. Thanks again.